Welcome to Vintage SF. I'm Richard Rempel. Seven Eves by Neil Stevenson, 2015. This is a big, hard SF novel. 861 pages. Rachel from Shades of Orange talks about Neil Stevenson all the time. I asked her which would be the first novel I should read. And Seven Eves is the one that she recommended. And it was a good recommendation. As I knew many people loved Neil Stevenson, I tried to stay away from some of the descriptions of his novels. It's sort of like when you see trailers for movies. If you know there's a movie you want to see, perhaps you just stay away from the trailer so that you don't get spoiled. Well, I want to tell you guys, if you don't know anything about Seven Eves, about that far into the novel, there are two very, very significant events and revelations that affect the rest of the book. I need to talk about those two things from the beginning of the book in those first 20 pages. So if you really want to be completely spoiler free, pick up this book, um, don't read the back of it even, then maybe you should exit now. But all I want to say is it is worth reading. This is your exit point. I really don't like to tell people to go away. All right. Normally I would put this up here, but this big boy is too big for this stand. I don't know, maybe I could stand it like this. There we go. I think that works. If it falls down in the video, well, there's some, oh, I think it just about did. There's some comedy for the video. The two events that you need to know about, or at least revelation maybe I should say, are one, the moon has a collision with something that punctures right through it, right through the core and out the other side. Speculation, maybe it's a mini black hole, but we never know for sure. But what this does is it breaks the moon into seven pieces. There's clouds of regolith out around these pieces. We see this from some characters' eyes from Earth as they realize that the moon as we know it is not there anymore and is replaced by this white cloud with some big lumps. Interesting. New sky. A couple days later, though, one of the big pieces collides with another big piece and breaks apart. Lots of shrapnel type of pieces, and now we have eight big pieces of the moon. Why is this one a big revelation? You probably thought that the moon would start to pulverize itself, eventually form a ring around our planet. Well, the problem is those pieces aren't going to all stay out in orbit. A lot of them are going to come to Earth. And when they come to Earth, there will be so many of them that they're going to light the sky on fire. Biological life is going to be wiped off the face of the Earth. This book is about species survival. The International Space Station that we have here in this novel is in the near future. It has an asteroid attached to it. This asteroid of metal and iron has been brought in so that we can learn how to mine these asteroids. Now, this asteroid can act as a shield and we try to launch as many humans off the planet as possible. But there's a lot of hard science here. How do you support people in space for what might be thousands of years? How do you select who goes to space? How do you protect all the vehicles in space from tiny particles of the moon? If you've ever read big sprawling novels, say like James Michener's novels, then you have an idea of the cast of characters that we go through in this book. Neil Stevenson is very good at creating believable characters. He is also very good at the science. Reading this book is also like having a science class in orbital mechanics, biology, and human psychology. For the first two thirds of the novel, we look at how people survive. We see the zero hour as Earth becomes uninhabitable. We see brave and desperate missions crucial to survival of the human race. We see personal sacrifice. And ultimately, we're left wondering, will this all work? 
Then something strange happens in this novel. We leap forward 5,000 years. We see the outcome of all the struggles in the first two thirds of the novel, meet new characters, and go on another adventure. I appreciate that this novel wasn't broken into two as a duology. We still get a complete story, including this 5,000 year ahead story. There are some wonderful illustrations in the book as well that help us understand the science and the future depicted. I think this is the first truly hard SF book that I've reviewed this year, and it is a wonder. Now, if you're a reader who doesn't appreciate large info dumps of science, you may want to stay clear of this book. A lot of what I might call the bloat in this book is that hard SF. But if you find it fascinating from a very good teacher, this book is for you. It is a very memorable read. I give it. 9 out of 10. Have you read any Neil Stevenson? Do you have any recommendations about the next novel that I read by him? I'm very tempted to pick up Anathem, but I'm not sure if that's the one I should pick up next. Enter the conversation in the comments below. Until next time, keep reading.